All right, day nine, advent of code, starting now. Uh, we're walking along a grid. We have a knot on the grid. Series of motions. Let's see. Head and tail must be touching. Okay. I see. Okay. Right, zero, down, one. Uh, negative one. Zero, one, zero. So there's just
Six seven nine. Okay. E. Oh, okay, well, part two went well. Part one went, yeah. Uh, maybe there was a simpler way to do it. So what's going on here? Um, so we have, uh, I don't know, our head, which is moving around according to the input instructions. And then the tail is sort of following it uh, through this, I don't know, somewhat confusing set of rules, I would say. Um, but basically, uh, if it's within, you know, one square, it doesn't move, and otherwise, uh, it tries to keep up. So what I thought, which apparently was right, was, you know, if it's within one square, then we don't need to do anything. Uh, if it's two squares away in both directions, that is, if H was already diagonal and then it moved, well, that's actually impossible. Right, I think this never happens. Uh, so fine. So if it's two squares away in the y, right in the row, uh, then the y moves to be one square away, and the column just moves to match. And if it's two squares away in the column, in x, then y moves to match, row moves to match, and column moves one square away. Uh, so I think that's the rule. And then let me adjust this to do part one and part two. p1.add p0. And p2 dot add t8. And we want to print out the answer for part one and part two. This does happen. Which is examples are long. Six zero nine zero and two five six six. How can this happen? Oh, it happens in part two, but not part one. Interesting. Uh, I believe. So like in the head never moves diagonally, but the tail can move diagonally. And then the tail that's following it can needs, you know, can hit this case. Because if you're already like, let's see, like H one, two, goes to uh, right. H goes there, two goes there, two. 1h, 
And now we have this case where we have two, one H. Um, so in this case, uh, you just move like one away in both the row and the column um, if you're two away. So right, this is the case where yeah, you're just a diagonal jump of two. And then you move you know, one in the direction. Uh, yeah. So I think the hard part is like getting this logic right, writing this function. And then once you've done that, um, so you just go through and follow the directions. Uh, so figure out what direction you're moving in, how far you're moving, and then just make moves one at a time in that direction. So move the head, that's straightforward. Uh, you know, just literally make a move in that direction. And then the tail follows the head according to this function that we wrote. And then in part two, we have these other eight tails that each follow you know, the previous tail. <coughs> and then in part one, we're tracking uh, where the first tail goes to. And in part two, we're tracking where the ninth tail goes to. Um, um, you know, we sort of, uh, we want to make sure we count the very starting position. So I think it would even be enough to do uh, like this. So uh, we, we don't want to forget the start position. Um, actually, I think we don't actually need this because the head only moves one score at a time. So we're, it's, the tail is guaranteed not to move on the first turn. Anyway, um, yeah. so move everything and then just uh, you know keep track of where the tails go because that's what we want to know is how many positions the tails visited. So keep track of that in a set and then find out the size of the set at the end. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. I think it's just like this logic that's kind of tricky. Um, so I'll just go over it one more time to make sure I understand it. So if it's already if it's in, within a square, including diagonally, then we're good. We don't need to move anything. Um, if we have this you know weird case where it's sort of two away in both directions, then we take um, you know one step in both directions. Uh, this logic is kind of convoluted because I don't actually keep track of like what the you know whether the tail is above or below, so this handles both cases, right? It's like go one away, and then go one away in whatever direction you're in, um, and then if you're, you know, if the row is off by two, also the column's only off by one, so you can just go directly to the right column because you move diagonally if you have to, uh, and then the row moves one away. So like, notice that we might be changing the column even if, like, we could move uh, just one. So like, if we have this right. it would be valid to just do this but the problem says to do this so you always uh you know adjust you like even if you could move to be diagonally adjacent you always move to be orthogonally adjacent instead uh so you just copy the head here and then this is just the same case for the other coordinate. Right? We copy the row of the head, and then we move you know, one away in the column, uh, whichever direction one away is. Uh, yeah, so that's it for day nine. Kind of a cool problem. Uh, see you tomorrow.